Hi, this is Terry. I've lost 180 pounds with keto, carnivore, and counting calories. Now I'm on a mission to improve the health of my heart. Well, it's that time of the year. It's it's where a tank it's where a tank top to bed <laughs> it's where a tank top to bed kind of year, cause there's a thunderstorm's coming, and you don't want to be caught with the girls hanging out. If your roof gets blown off your house. <laughs> There's a storm a brewing outside, y'all. So get your tank top and shorts on because don't know one of you don't nobody want to see the thing. See the girls are flopping to and fro. Even though even though you could toss them over your shoulder or tie them in a bow. Nobody wants to see it. <laughs> I love myself sometimes. Anyway, get your tank tops on and corral the girls because there's bad weather coming. All right, bye. Good morning. It's Sunday. I have my protein coffee. This is just... I always... <clears throat> when I run my coffee, I run it through the 8 ounces twice. Well, on Sunday mornings, I run it through 10 ounces twice. And then I drink on some, and then I put the rest in here. And to this, I've added half of a serving of protein powder and then um and then some of my electrolytes and then coffee so sometimes i add milk but not this time so um i have i don't add the protein powder or anything until it's cooled down because it um it, when it's hot the protein powder i use kind of clumps together so in the meantime i'm going to cook up some of my cubed rutabaga i'm going to skillet fry it and then I'm going to do three eggs. So I'll show you that when it's ready. So since I have kids church, this is how it's going down. I went ahead and fried up some rutabaga, skillet rutabaga, instead of skillet potatoes. And instead of ketchup, since I'm going to be eating it in my car, I sprinkled on some of that um, tomato bouillon. Ooh, that's good. It's a good flavor. And I got um, eggs, fried those up. And I put some tomato bouillon on that too. I figure, like I said, I'm going to take this. It's, I need to leave right now. And I usually get to the parking lot a little bit early. And so um, this will let, give me something to eat. Because actually, I should be leaving like... Oh, wait a minute. My watch, my clock... My stove clock's wrong. It's 7.33. I always leave at 7.40. I was wondering why my alarm wasn't going off. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and leave, like I said, about five minutes early. Then either I'll probably, I will probably eat some along the way, knowing me. So I got a spoon and fork to eat on it. But um, I'll probably stab some and eat on it. Listen, usually whenever I do that, it's gone before I even hit the interstate. But anyway, it's all right. So I'm going to take this with me. So that'll be my breakfast. I'll have my water with me, and I will keep this protein coffee for during church. All right, I will see you guys after church. Bye. It's Sunday, Sunday, which is Jesus and Judy Day. Bye. Today was different. It was um, like almost kind of like a teenager takeover. So our church is really, really big with the youth. And um, I don't know if it's Sunday or Wednesday, they have a youth uh, group, and it is nothing like when I went to high school. They have like an actual church service. They praise and worship and sing. And, and so today the youth, the, the leader, lead pastor over the youth, he was the one that did the preaching and had the message. And then um, a lot of the youth were the ones that did the singing up on the stage. So it was a youth takeover. It's really pretty cool. Um, so let's see what I wrote down. So he called it a student takeover. Oh, he said it's Wednesday is the youth group. But anyway, today was Pastor Jonathan. And so it was a little different. So, but, um, um, so he said he likes to, he said in conversations, he, he said sometimes you're having a conversation with somebody and then they don't understand like a definition of something from the get go. And so after you're done having the conversation, you kind of have to go back and, and define something you said in the beginning and rehab the conversation. So he said he likes to start off with definitions. So unashamed is to being without guilt, self-consciousness, or doubt. Because, you know, we're talking about unashamed. 
And he said that he defined the word process as a natural phenomenon marked by gradual change that lead, that lead toward a particular result. And he said, not everyone will be happy that you're starting a process with Jesus. And he talked about back in the New Testament, becoming a believer was really going against the establishment. They were going against the, the laws and, and the, the, you know, the teachings. Well, they weren't going against the teachings of Moses, but because the laws were fulfilled through Jesus, the people who, who did not believe that Jesus came felt that the laws were still needed to still be in place because they didn't understand that Jesus did not come to replace the law. He came to fulfill the law. Um, and so then let's see. Um, so C. So we talked about Acts 14, verse 4 to 10. So we're talking about Paul now, Saul, who became Paul. And he said, the people of the town were divided in their opinion about them. Some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. Then a mob of Gentiles and Jews came along with their, their leaders and decided to attack and stone them. He said Jews and Gentiles hated each other. And he said this, they, they, said they came together as one to stone the Christians. So they came together, you know, the Jews and Gentiles, they came together and got along in order to um, stone them. And it said, when the apostles learned of it, they fled to the region of Lyconia. Let's see, then I say, go to my notes. Um, sometimes we need to move away from a situation. And, and there they preached the good news. And while they were while they were at Lyst Lystra, Paul and Barnabas came upon a man who had who with crippled feet. He had been that way from birth, so he had never walked. He was sitting and listening to Paul preach. Looking straight at him, Paul realized he had faith to be healed. So Paul called to him in a loud voice, "Stand up!" And the man jumped to his feet and started walking. Um, it said, God shows up because God is faithful. We are called to build bridges for people. We can't make somebody believe in Jesus. And um, we can only share our experience and build the bridge and show people Jesus. But we can't make them believe in Jesus. So while we are on this journey, we must guard against becoming prideful and convicted. So he talked about some people, sometimes we elevate people like a pastor or someone who leads us to God. So I always jokingly call my friend's husband, Shepherd Matt, because <clears throat> he was the first one to find this church and he has brought his wife to this church, his sister-in-law and her boyfriend to this church, her, his other sister-in-law to this church and another sister-in-law and her husband and her kids sometimes come and me. So I jokingly call him Shepherd Matt. So I, it, it would be easy to put him up on a pedestal as somebody who led us to this church. It would be <coughs> easy to look up on that stage and see the pastors who are leading us to Jesus and put them on a pedestal. But that's not what we're supposed to do. We have to make sure that we keep God as the leader. So then it goes to D. Acts 14, 19 to 23. I like when they have it all on here, so I don't have to dig through mom's Bible. Then some Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowds to their side. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the town, thinking he was dead. It says, <clears throat> Paul didn't, I'm just going to throw this in there. They thought he was dead, so obviously he wasn't. Paul didn't quit spreading Jesus' love. If he would have stopped right there, then that would have been the end of it. We would have never heard anymore. He would. He could have been like, look, this is what's going to happen. Forget this noise. I'm just going to go back to just being, to just being a, a, a Pharisee or Sadducee, whatever. I think he was a Pharisee. I'll just go back to that and go back to hating the, the Christians. But he didn't. So it was, that's what he was talking about is how Paul did not quit and instead he continued to spread Jesus' love. 
So they'd stoned Paul and dragged him out of town, thinking he was dead. But as the believers gathered around him, he got up and went back into the town. The next day he left with Barnabas for Derby. After preaching the good news in Derby and making many disciples, Paul and Barnabas returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, where they <clears throat> strengthened the believers. They encouraged them to continue in the faith, reminding them that we must suffer many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Paul and Barnabas also appointed elders in every church with prayer and fasting. They turned the elders over to the care of the Lord <clears throat> in whom they had put their trust. So he talked about how we need to make sure we surround ourselves with the right people. And so surrounding ourselves by the right people is what we need. For example, other believers. So people saw those people. Those new believers saw that Paul was beaten and battered, but they came to God anyway. God says there's going to be trials and pain, but our trials and pain and testimony can help others come to Jesus. So we people don't just hear good things. I mean, just because you see somebody happy all the time, that's not going to you know bring you to Jesus. You know, if somebody's able to be relating and be like, look, <clears throat> I was married and divorced twice. I was not walking with God. My husband and I were doing stupid things and we were not going to church and I was not living a Christian life. But then going through those divorces, I was able to find Jesus. And so sharing those things are relatable to people. So it's, you know, people need to hear the good, the bad and the ugly so that it's it's relatable. You know, the pastors, even our pastors, you know, they're like, you know, just, we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But it's in the things where we mess up that we can share with others and help others, help us bridge, build a bridge for others so they can come to Jesus too. Because what is it Jesus said? <clears throat> the um, the healthy doesn't need a hospital. They don't need a doctor. So um, it's the broken and the sinners and, and the people that are, you know, uh, hurting. That we're the ones that need Jesus. And he said, there's four things <clears throat> to help with a path, help us on our path to Jesus. We need to remove ourselves from situations that are not good, <clears throat> surround ourselves with the right people, share all sh our struggles and where we are at in the process, and don't give up when we find a convenient exit. We need to trust God. So those divorce during the divorce, I could have just been like, forget it. Jesus ain't coming. I'm just going to go out and, and do whatever I want to do, be with whoever I want to be with because, well, God let me pick the bad people and I'm just a bad man picker. Or I just, I'm never going to make it with Jesus. He's just not going to help me. Well, no. You know, I could have just given up and just gone on and lived this uh, worse, a more sinful life, a deviant life, but I didn't. You know, I'm like, okay. I dug in with, you know, Dug in with both heels and all my 10 toes. I dug in and said, all right, Jesus, you got this. Um, <clears throat> because overall, God is going to show up. And we need to keep God as a priority so that in the end, he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. So we're supposed to sur surround ourselves with unashamed people as the key to remaining true in the process. And I lived unashamed in my process because without doubt, God has happened inside me and led me to salvation. So <clears throat> that was a service today. Like I said, it was Pastor Jonathan. And uh, it was a good service. I enjoyed it. So, um, all right. Well, I'm hungry. Now I'm going to go get some food. Not food, just some snacks. Hang on. So I brought some things to mom. I'm going to give her my grits. And I'm going to give her this um, old-fashioned oatmeal. And I'm going to give her, I don't know why, but I'm giving her two cans of green beans. Y'all saw my kitchen table. You know why I'm giving her those green beans. So <clears throat> it's Sunday, which is Judy, Jesus, and Pimento Cheese Sunday. And three cook three <clears throat> three carrots. I always pick three carrots and I have some pimento cheese on a carrot. Judy, if you're watching this, how come you haven't cut up any cheese lately? Huh? You should have some sliced cheese that I could take a piece of. 
I'm disappointed in you. You know I'm coming to town. You know I'm your baby. You know I'm your favorite daughter. I see some cheese in there. I see you have cheese. You just haven't sliced it up for me. What's wrong with you, woman? You're slacking. Ain't I terrible? <clears throat> I'm just rotten. She knows I'm just teasing. All right. That's the kind she gets. It ain't perfect, but that's why I don't buy it. I just eat it on Sundays. I could never have them. Listen, I want you to see these apples. This woman, I never seen somebody be able to keep apples as long as she does. Whatever the temperature of the refrigerator is, it's perfect. I think she said she had them last was like 10 days. All right. I had no nuts last week. If I have any, <clears throat> Editing Terry will, will confess. I'm going to try no nuts again. Let me show you where I'm at with the blanket I've been working on. Told y'all I got to make three of them. Can you see the bottom? Yeah. So, I'm making a baby blanket for a little boy. Right now, I've already got it done. Like the main thing done. So now what I do, hang on. After I get it, after I get it all, because it's corner to corner, which means you start crocheting this way, and then you start crocheting this way. And so when you reach the peak, that was this peak right here is where I got to. And now I just crochet all the way around it to make it a nice even border. And so now, so I've got, I've got half of the, of the corner done. And whenever I get done with, with this color, you know, like I said, it's all the same color. Then I'll switch it to, where's the other color? Hold or newt. I'll, use, I'll do like a, just a couple rows of this gray. So, yeah. And then I'll be switching to a girl blanket for somebody else. So, all right. Love you guys. I'll see you. I'll show you what I get in month. I don't know, man. I'm now I'm torn after last week that dad gum that dad gum uh chopped steak was so stinking amazing. Oh no, which I'll get pork steak or chopped steak. Big decision. I'll figure it out when I get there. All right, bye. Well, I don't know what the heck happened, but somewhere along the line I decided that I was done. I totally missed this section right here. So I'm gonna have to go back and undo. What I've done, that is absolutely hilarious. So I guess Terry, Terry last night was done with this thing. <laughs> oh, my stars and garters. Anyway, I got to figure out what I done done, y'all. I am a hot mess. Anyway, but yeah, so just never know, never know what's going to happen around me. So now I got to undo these two sides so I can. <laughs> you guys sometimes I worry about me sometimes I just worry about myself <clears throat> you know what I would love I would love it would be fun to do a live while I'm crocheting but the problem is like I see him do that on TikTok but the pro oh, wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute the problem with that is that People want to comment and ask questions. Well, I can't can't answer comments if I can't if I can't read the dealy. Well, Karn Flabbit, I lost it. I lost my little marker. Well, I'll find it in a second when I stand up. Cause now I got to get back. I have to go. I have to take this away. <coughs> so I'm gonna finish taking this away because right now you see. I sh it should, it should be, see it's a little boop, that needs to come off, so hold on, that's how it should be, so I got that much more to go, <laughs> that's kind of funny, 
And this one is higher than this one because this is what it's going to attach to. You guys. You guys. I'm such a ding dong sometimes. I was. It's because I, I hate. I hate blankets. I hate making blankets. Here's my thing. I like starting stuff. But I hate finishing stuff. Like crochet and projects. I love to just get it going. And getting about halfway. But then I hate finishing them up. I don't know why. I think because it's like. I don't know. Like with dolls. Like when I'm making dolls, it's kind of like, well, I'm going to be sad to see this little doll go to its new mama. I'm going to miss it, you know, because you spend time with it, making it. You give it a little personality. And then whenever it goes to its mama, you don't get it back again. That's probably how people who raise puppies are. They get to experience their little lives and their little personalities and get to know them. And then they, they you know, take them to their new home. Well, that's how I feel. But, uh, I know it's silly. But anyway, so, yeah. So now, I, I boy, I, I stopped about five rows too early. That is hilarious. Anyway, all right, well, I'm going to keep going, and I'll see where I get. So when Mom gets here, we'll be chitty-chatting. So, um, but I bring this so I can talk, and because and I don't have to do a lot of counting whenever I make blankets. So I can talk. And, um, and not have to, like, you know, focus. Whereas, like, when I do dolls and stuff, those I have to focus on. Anyway, all right. I'm such a dork. Bye. Look what I remembered to share with you, my salad. It's blue cheese. And today I got a pork steak and broccoli. Yum, yum. Mom got a chop steak over there. But there's a roll over there, too. But that's what Mom got. So Mom didn't eat all of her chop steak. And I had four bites of my pork steak left. So she sent it home with me. So that's what I'm having, that meat there. And then she didn't eat all of her broccoli. And I had some broccoli here. So I heated up. I cooked, up, steamed some of my broccoli with a little bit of red onion. And then some seasoning on it. And then, so this is what I'm going to have for supper. Broccoli with some pork steak and some ground Oh, what do they call that? Uh, ground chuck, chuck, chuck steak, cube steak, whatever it's called. Anyway, yeah. Ow! Cube steak? What's it called? Chop steak. I think it's called chop steak. Whatever it is, it's good. Broccoli's good, hot, but good. So now, I'll take a bite of that little piece of the beef. Boy, I might play the same amount, same amount of time as always, but whoo that's hot. So, anyway, so that's my supper, along with some fruit. And that's what I'm having, having. Boy, I'm just forgetting everything. What's my name? Who are you all again? Where are you from? <clears throat> kids' church was fun. Um, there's, there's just a cute thing. Kids are so dad gum cute. Um, but had a good time at kids' church. Um, kids, it's so cute because those kids want to climb that rock wall so bad. But there's like one little girl and she'd get up just one, like that far off the ground. And she tried about 10 times. And each time, help me, help me down. Okay, and a few minutes later, help me down. Okay, so anyway, that's how I spent my first four minutes was helping her get down. And anyway, but it's always fun. I get a kick out of those kids, and the staff they are amazing, they are just the greatest. And then they have some fun young volunteers, they're like young adults, students, and they help, they volunteer. So it's fun seeing those, seeing them interact because they're probably like you know, 17, 18 years old, and so they get to kind of just be silly and have fun, so I enjoy watching them too, so anyway, all right, well, sorry about that, I have an alarm to go off to tell me to check something, anyway, so that's my Sunday, and I will see you guys in the next video, I love you guys, Jesus loves you guys, and I'll see you later, bye.